You ever wonder why your renders take an hour, but professionals can pump them out in seconds? It's not just the hardware. It's knowing that one setting that can shave off 95% of a render time. In this video, I'm gonna share my 10 favorite tricks for reducing render times in cycles that I learned over 20 years of using Blender. Starting with number one, instancing. The standard way that beginners learn to copy objects in Blender is Shift D. But when you hit render, Blender has to load that same data into the render buffer twice. That's not a big deal if there's only two objects, but if you have thousands of duplicated objects, Blender could be wasting minutes reading everything one by one. So instead of pressing Shift D, press Alt D. Now, instead of duplicating, it's instancing meaning it's sharing the same object data across multiple objects. Now, even if you have thousands of copies, Blender only needs to read the original once, reducing your render time here by a whopping 95%. Frustum culling. Say you've made a big environment in Blender with lots of objects. Well, believe it or not, the rest of the scene that is outside of the camera is still contributing to the render time because Cycles needs to calculate the bounce lighting and reflections from everything. But if you don't care about that, here is a quick fix. Under Render Properties, enable Simplify and then turn on Camera Culling. Then select all the objects in your scene, go to Object Properties, and while holding down the Alt key, turn on Use Camera Culling, which, because you held down Alt, applies that to all of the selected objects. Now, when you render, anything outside of the frame is automatically hidden. In this case, reducing render times by a whopping 30%. Light clamping. If you're rendering glass or liquids, core sticks will often create bright spots known as fireflies, and these take a really long time to resolve. So one quick hack is to just decrease indirect light clamping. This will set a ceiling for how bright a bounced ray can be so that it can finish faster. This is less accurate, but if the difference is negligible, it's a nice way to shave minutes off a render. Simplify window glass. If you add a window to your scene in Blender and then you set the shader to glass, Cycles will say, oh, glass, I need to calculate caustics. And then everything in the scene gets darker, there's fireflies, and it's pointless because thin glass does not produce caustics. So a quick solution to this is to select your glass object, go to object properties, and then under ray visibility, uncheck shadow. Not only does this result in more light passing through the glass, but in this classroom scene, it decreased render times by a whopping 66%. Persistent data. When you start rendering a scene in Blender, you may notice that it doesn't start right away. It first kicks off BVH building, shader compilation, and loads geometry into cycles. And if you're rendering an animation, Blender will repeat this for every frame, despite nothing new being loaded. So what professionals and any right-minded person does is they go to their render settings, performance, and then under final render, turn on persistent data. This now stores all of that pre-render information into your memory so it can be reused for future frames. This is without a doubt one of the biggest optimizations you can do for any animation. Noise threshold. You probably already know that if you increase samples in Blender, then you get less noise. But what you might not know is that not all areas need the same amount of samples. For example, areas receiving lots of light need less samples and darker areas need more. So in Blender 2.83, they introduced a feature called Noise Threshold that's supposed to solve this. So rather than render everything uniformly, it stops rendering once the desired threshold is met. And that would be great, except they made the default a stupidly low 0.01. This threshold is so low that it often does nothing because you hit your max samples before you hit the threshold. I think a much better value is 0.03. The difference is imperceptible, but it results in a 64% faster render time. And if you're thinking to go higher than this, you will get more reduction, but just know that you might get some splotchy shadows in your animations. Use smaller textures. You know when you're visiting a texture site like Polygon and you're given the option of downloading a texture in 8K? And it's tempting, right? Because more detail is obviously better, so why not just get the highest size? 
I'll tell you why. Because 8K textures can take twice as long to load into the render buffer than a 4K texture. So if your scene has lots of textures, then it's especially important to pick the smallest size needed. And here's the other thing, you almost never need 8K. Even if you brought the camera right down to the surface and render in Ultra HD, there's still almost no perceivable difference between 8K and 4K. So first, make sure you're using the Polygon add-on so that you can download and import thousands of PBR textures right into Blender. Then in your add-on preferences, make sure your default texture size is set to 4K. So now every time you download something, you're getting the highest meaningful size without being wasteful. And on that rare occasion that you do need the detail, you can still select 8K from the dropdown. But let's say it's too late and you've already got a scene with hundreds of oversized textures. Don't worry, you can still save it. Go to simplify and then set a texture limit. What this will do is it'll automatically reduce those big textures at render time. It does add a small amount of overhead, but it's a good option if your textures are maxing out your VRAM. That will at least bring everything back to normal so you'll get some of the benefits. Fast GI approximation. By default, cycles will use global illumination to calculate light bounces, but there's a setting found in render settings under light paths called fast GI approximation. And what this does is after a set amount of bounces, cycles will switch from using global illumination to a faster ambient occlusion based approximation, which is much, much faster. Turned off, it'll look like this, when you turn it on after two bounces, it looks really similar in quality, but it's 23% faster. You can reduce it even further to one bounce and it'll be 77% faster, but the difference is more noticeable. So adjust this bounce setting depending on how much accuracy you need. Switch to the GPU. By far the simplest thing anyone can do. Go to user preferences, system, and select optics or CUDA if you've got a NVIDIA card, HIP if you've got an AMD, or Metal for Mac. And unfortunately, if you don't see any card listed there, then you're out of luck. But most modern computers have a GPU that is faster than their CPU. But what about using both? That's tempting. Why not just use CPU and GPU to get the best of both worlds? But it doesn't work like that. Because if your CPU is slower than your GPU, using both will actually take longer than just using your GPU alone. So if you're not sure, just do a quick test. In my case, enabling both was actually 6% slower than using GPU alone. And a lot of people don't know this, but you can also turn on GPU for your denoiser and the compositor, which will reduce render times even more. Simplify geometry. If you're downloading random 3D models off the internet and importing them into your scene, you might unknowingly import a model with more density than the sun. All of these polys here mean that Blender has to work extra hard to load it into the memory and calculate all the light and everything else. So a quick and dirty solution to dense geometry is to use the decimate modifier. If you set that ratio to something like 0.01, it'll now render 60% faster with no difference in quality. Just know that decimation can create artifacts that are especially noticeable on curved shiny objects. So in those cases, try also doing an auto smooth operation after, so it attempts to detect the edges and make them sharp. So those are my top 10 render hacks, but what are yours? I know there are others out there, so please leave it in the comments so that we can all learn and get faster renders. And if you like this video, why not check out some of these others on the screen and I'll see you there.